it off. Here we are, three hours later. And I think the truck just died on me for some reason. You saw the Google search again, a video I wasn't planning on doing a video or a trip that I wasn't planning on doing a video, but well, see that? Uh, we are figuring out what the f is going on with my starter. Like the starter relay is bad. Okay, just got off the phone with Chris, uh, the mechanic I use back in OCO, and more so used a lot often when I had the Ford. But uh, troubleshooted through, just seeing, okay, hey, here's not the, I had said the uh, relay, but it was the solenoid. I'll show you a picture of it. And so we troubleshooted, make sure that each of the big wires had power, tried to jump it, clicks over, but it doesn't actually start the engine. So he's like, man, you could, could uh, find somebody to pull start you. That's what I would do. That's kind of where we're at. He's like, if you have enough air in your tanks. So I do. I don't know why you need air in your tanks. You guys are going to you can let me know. I'm intrigued. But so, you know, he's like, man, just, you know, find somebody with a three quarter ton or a one ton truck. I mean, I've done it with a half ton truck before with a semi. And, uh, you know, have them pull start you. So make sure it's ignition's on leave it in gear fourth he said you know put it in about fourth gear and then get going let off the clutch should start right up you know don't run into the into the guy that's pulling you but that's another story so that's where we're at i actually put a post out in the facebook groups the different rv transport groups just asking hey does anybody want to want to pull start a little box truck but as i was heading into just the sap brothers where i just literally stopped to get some food and a water and a monster. And I was contemplating leaving the truck running. I'm like, eh, now nah, we'll turn it off. Turn it off. Here we are. Three hours later ish. But I was like, you know what? Screw it. Because there is a, you can, well, you didn't see that, but there's a service center at this sap brothers and i was like i oh, may i'll just go over there and see if there's something they can do as well go over there talk to them and i was like you know hey what my mechanic back home had said to do was, was hey see if you can find somebody to pull start it i didn't know if you guys had any other options and one of the guys was like you know hey give me 30 minutes i can i got a forward i pull start you so i think what i'm gonna do stay tuned because this is gonna be a whole new episode what i'm gonna do is hopefully we get it started you know by the bless of god or whatever like i don't even know uh that i don't know how what my clock is looking like right now and head towards Middlebury and I'm gonna hopefully buy a starter and this is only because of you guys only because I'm officially a youtuber I think I don't know how many subs you need to be an official youtuber but I had a guy I believe his email said people call him turbo drive by slow back down I'm like you can tell he's a transporter because of the rock guard I'm like what the fuck's this guy doing <laughs> <laughs> uh, he shot me an email though. Uh, he rolls his window down. He's like, ah! It's like, ah! <laughs> I thought he was going to flag me down and say something's wrong with the truck. But yeah, anyway, so I think I'm a YouTuber. So you know what? This is this is all for the for the tube. I am going to hopefully uh, stop at a freight liner. There's several along here. There's one just right in Juliet, I think. Buy a starter and maybe go to the old DAC center and replace it let you guys watch because and literally there's no freaking videos on starters with freightliner m2s so i'm gonna make a how-to video out of it as well but yeah that's the plan if not i'm just gonna park on a hill somewhere so i know i can get a rolling start in the morning that or i'll just uh keep it running all night and go stay in a hotel either way you're gonna find out man i'm glad i have you guys here to you know be along for the ride with me Still waiting to get pull started, but you think you're having a bad day. Holy shit, that was kind of easy. 
We are on the road. <laughs> yeah, baby. I just got off the phone as well with Freightliner uh, in South Bend. They have, uh, it's an upgraded starter, but it's an OEM specs, he said. You guys know, I don't know what the hell that means. But so he's got one, it's like 360 bucks or something. I'm gonna start YouTubing how to change a starter. Although I was just talking to the mechanic here that hold started me in reverse and we we're talking. He's like, oh, if you don't, uh, like if you don't have the tools, I wouldn't do it. Uh, but I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Here's that wreck again. good to be true we are maybe five miles down the road and then the engine protect light came on and I think the truck just died on me for some reason I don't know why let's uh look up the old code reader I guess so this I have a bad sensor I'm pretty sure of it I bought a new sensor for it today on my way up uh, because it's normal levels but it whatever but yeah I'm not sure what this is no clue I called a mechanic. I'm not going to mention or where this mechanic is from or if I've dealt with him in the past, but they seem to think that this little motherfucker not being, you know, well, the old one, this one being the solution, that the old coolant sensor, which, I mean, it looks like it's overfilling right now, but it's not. We're just, we're parked on the side that it just must have sent a code to the system saying, hey, he's gonna overheat, go into limp mode, which would make sense why that engine protect came on. And then it gave me a few seconds to get over and you sure enough, that's you know kind of how it happened. But anyways, I don't remember if I said it prior. Go to shift from fifth to six, cause I'm just getting done with the construction, passing I-39, I believe it is. And go to shift from fifth to six, cause it you know, goes from 45 back up to 70. Something didn't feel right. Just, you know, lack of throttle response. Yeah, I guess I've tried shifting too soon. Go back to fifth, no throttle response. Try to go to six, nothing. And then I'm just like, fuck man, let's see what's going on. Give it a little gas. All my gauges look fine. But then that engine prevent kicks on and I start to feel that I'm losing some control in my steering. Like, holy shit, let's get over. So we get over, I call them. Uh, and they're like, you know, hey, that could be it. Uh, asked a bunch of questions about fuel. Had me check the fuel just in case somebody from the truck stop stole some fuel from me uh, from one tank and then it was not transferring appropriately or something. He was like, man, I've seen crazy shit. But uh, he said, I might as well go ahead and change this while he's coming over. We'll have that changed and then he'll be here and we'll pull start it and we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna set everything up over here just cause I'm on the side of the road and I don't know how quick he'll be here. I wanna kinda have it done so he seems like I know what I'm doing. But yeah, okay, Woo, stay tuned. Well, I wasn't gonna record anything, but here it is. Seems to be going smooth and it was coming undone pretty easy. Bear with me. A few moments later. You can tell me in the comments, but you will probably see it in a few seconds if it's not right. I feel like just hand tightening this is good enough. I feel like just by hand, you could over tighten some other There we go. All right, so the code is gone. The check engine light is off. Now we just have to get this mother trucker started. All right, we're taking off. So far, so good. And like he had mentioned, he's like, man, you probably best off just to go stop up here at the next truck stop for the night, just so you don't get 100 miles down the road and you're beep, you know? So I don't think I could agree more. Definitely sucks. Knock on wood. Stay tuned. I 
against my better judgment, we decided to stop in Morris. Uh, I'm gonna check just the where the sensor is at just to make sure nothing's leaking and then stay here for the night, hit the road in the morning. Now, the only reason I'm doing that is because of an ELD. If I was a single pole, I'd probably sleep for four hours tonight, be on the road again. But I can't live that life you guys live anymore, so let's check this out. morning it is the next day the truck ran all night and i slept in the truck which uh, <laughs> it's not actually horrible like it was you know say a month ago but still hot sticky uncomfortable no ac yeah those little fans ah they don't really do too good of service other than just you know, they blow air on you. Anyways, cool attempt stayed right at around 200, just idling all night. Uh, no other issues. We're gonna hit the road, stop in, probably south bend, get that starter, probably load up, head back to Iowa, and then maybe have a friend or uh, Chris help me with place. I don't know, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm at Middlebury right now. So I'm looking for two apexes. And again, so far no issues uh, with the truck in terms of any power issues or anything, cooling stuff. It's all good. I just can't shut this baby off yet. Uh, and interesting enough, ever since fixing, oh uh, yeah, fuck, I can't. Well, let's see. It's not driver damage if it's if you're not hooked up to it, is it? And it's not your unit. <laughs> I'm just joking. But interesting enough, ever since fixing the sensor, my voltage for the truck for the batteries have been at 14. Where normally for I don't know the last few months it had been it would get up to 14 at sometimes and then it would just kind of hover around anywhere from 13.5 somewhere sometimes up to 14. So that faulty sensor must have been the issue with just my batteries always being at 14 volts. I don't know. So I think it's official, he is not the lookout man because I've seen him a few times now here by himself. Not every time I fuel here within the trips, but maybe once a week, I don't know. saw it it started up yesterday and well i haven't changed the starter yet buckled that thing up but the local mechanic i use here i called him and i was just like yeah i'll go over there and i will just see if it's gonna start this morning and if it does i'm not gonna change it at the old walmart parking lot so sure enough it started this morning and then he had just mentioned like it'll do that you know it's just it's going out on you and you know the time that you need it to start it's not going to start so what the plan is is we're going to drive all the way down to wheat ridge I, I got a late start so i went with to drop miles off at preschool and then just 
uh, did some gym stuff after that, and it ended up, you know, time just kind of passed by, ended up being 11 o'clock and preschool was over, so I went and picked him up, took him back home, and then now we're going to hit the road. Yeah, stick around. You're going to see if I have any issues along the way. cousins right now so as you're seeing right now or maybe you already saw it i don't know how i put this video together but another check engine light came on i'll pop that up right here and i have not turned the truck off yet i don't know if it's start what i'm gonna do though is park on an incline turn the truck off because this code has popped up one other time to my knowledge after having my code reader i'm trying to get youtube certified and it could be just an issue of the crankcase filter or something. But I figured I'd talk to a Freightliner dealership. Yeah, we'll see. You may see me replace that and a starter. But so far, it hasn't died on us. After talking to the service department after I bought the part he said yeah that that code typically it's the crankcase filter change it out you know it could be one other thing but you would notice if there's other issues something about just really high pressure so we're gonna probably change that maybe while we're on the road tonight I don't know not doing the starter though that's for sure we are in Kearney, Nebraska. I'm gonna be done driving for the day. I mentioned I was gonna change that crankcase filter or breather or whatever. Uh, and unless I can find a hill to park on to ensure that this baby will start, I'm probably gonna wait until I get home. So you're gonna see it probably in the next few seconds. Uh, I'm actually parking at an Anytime Fitness where I'm gonna get a quick little workout in, go eat, and then probably stay in a motel while this bad boy runs because last night sucked. Yeah, so that's it. I'm gonna work out real quick. Okay. Okay, so we shut it off. It's been off and on raining here, so this is where I'm going to end the video. Uh, next vlog will start with the trials and tribulations of changing the crankcase filter or breather and potentially me doing the starter as well. So if you've stuck around this long, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe, and be on the lookout for the next video.